Pune based Genova Biopharmaceuticals, a subsidiary of MCure Pharmaceuticals, is working on India's first mRNA based vaccine for COVID 19. Genova has received funding from Department of Biotechnology and plans to start phase 1 clinical trials in October 2020. For COVID 19 vaccine, Genova is using next generation technology which combines mRNA and adjuvanted nanolipid carrier. This vaccine will be very low dose injectable, sustained release due to its self amplifying mRNA platform. This will ensure safe and efficacious vaccine. The advantage with Genova's mRNA vaccine is that it is rapidly scalable. So Genova can tap into the vast specialized nanoparticle capacity that has been already created at impure sterile parenteral sites to make close to 200 million doses. Additionally, our team is already partnering with different OEM manufacturers to install 1 billion doses capacity. Led by the visionary founder, Mr. Satish Mehta, who has given many innovative and first in India products to the country. MCure is committed in its fight against COVID and is working towards Swasth Bharat, Atmanirbhar Bharat. Jai Hind! So I welcome you one and all to this program on uh, today evening on the 5th of August with maternal near miss cases brought to you by Amox and MCure. So I would like to welcome the first convener, Dr. Pragati Khalatkar, who is a gynecologist and obstetrician, director of Khalatkar Hospital, secretary Menopause Society Nagpur and past president Narji and she has many accomplishments across associations and awards. I would like to pass the con to Dr. Pragati Kalatkar. Madam, please take it ahead. Yeah, thank you Dr. Session for such a wonderful introduction. So I welcome you all for today's session of Maternal Near Miss Lessons Learned. And this is our first webinar where we will be discussing about placenta accreta spectrum. So first of all, I invite President of our AMOGS, Dr. Nandita Palchetkar, ma'am, to welcome the gathering and bless us. She is, Dr. Nandita, a very well known face, not only in Maharashtra or India, but all over the globe. She's a professor in Oxford and Gynecology in GY Medical College, Navi, Mumbai. She is teacher for super specialty degrees of NB Reproductive Medicine in Delhi. She has, she's practicing infertility for the last 25 years. She is director of Nine Bloom IVF centers and she has held many prestigious posts and topmost posts. She was president for, she is president life for uh, Amox. She was past president of Foxy for 2019 and 20 and she had a rocking year. She was president for uh, Mumbai OBGY Society, IH, and vice president for SR and chairperson of MSR in 2016 and 18. She is member of National Guidelines for Accreditation, Supervision and Regulation of ART Clinics in India. And she is person far excellent, always lively. I just gave her an idea, Madam, should we have something about near miss? And she just gave me the rope in my hand. Ragati, we have to do those webinars. So she gave so much of love and she, has, she give, let her all her, I mean, students to do and to flourish and to fly high. So I invite Dr. Inda Parjit Thank you, Pragati. That was a beautiful introduction right from the heart. And first of all, I want to welcome all the delegates and all the speakers on behalf of AMOGS. Uh, AMOGS this year has been very active. Unfortunately, we can't have any in-person uh, CMEs. But I have realized the talent which I have in uh, amogs and all of them are coming forward i mean uh, you know when pragati approached me for uh, near miss this is something which i really uh, wanted to do for a long time and uh, i probably was looking for somebody who would be passionate you know what i've realized is that uh, success comes if the person who's working with you is passionate about the cause and when Pragati came forward I think that was fantastic and I was happy that Pragati and Rohan 
took up this initiative and uh, took up this near miss. And uh, I have been practicing IVF for 25, 30 years and I do uh, obstetrics, you know, deliver all the IVF patients. And invariably I've realized they're all high risk obstetrics. And uh, in Bombay, I, you know, if I have trouble, I ring up Dr. Saraudi and I ask him, please come for help. And I realize the importance of uh, all the seniors who have done so much of obstetrics and these near miss cases are so, so very important. And I'm sure if I was practicing obstetrics in Delhi, I would call up Alka and tell her, Alka, please come help. I need help. I mean, after being AIMS professor for so long and handling all kinds of difficulties, it's amazing. And uh, Dr. Jay Prakash Patil has been bought very, very, uh, with the reason. He comes from Raichur and, uh, you know, he's gone and settled in his city uh, where he was brought up. And I think it's amazing because all these near miss cases, we have to, among the spread all over. And I think a lot of people have, put, uh, you know, have tuned in from different cities also. And we need to discuss all kinds of resources, some small places which have different resources. So Dr. Jay Prakash, with his expertise, will definitely contribute to that. And um, I want to thank uh, Abharani Sina. She's been a friend for a long time. And Birija, of course, who's my very own Amoxian for coming here and chairing this session. And of course, the uh, MQR for going and helping us with this uh, educational grant for this money. And uh, Science Integra, Subhu, Sheshan, Meenal, I think y'all are doing a fantastic job. A little bit about placenta accreta. You know, placenta accreta, the incidence is increasing because our cesarean rate has increased. So that is definitely adding to it. And also in IVF pregnancy, the incidence of placenta accreta uh, syndromes are definitely higher than what is in a normal patient. And I remember one incidence, which I must tell you, you know, for the first time, I had gone into the OT to watch my son operate. He was operating at D.Y. Patel and I was watching him and uh, it turned out to be a placenta accreta and he said, Mother, can you please wash up with me? And it was amazing that uh, you know I could be with him and I was just there and he handled the whole thing himself. So that's a very fond memory which I have with me and uh, Hello. I was happy to be there. I, these Hello. are what they are and they will give us that input and be there with us. And I'm sure you can bring up any of them anytime and they will be there to help us in a situation. So thank you very much. And Pragati, I hand over the mic. Thank you, ma'am, for such a lovely word. And now, without wasting time, we proceed for our panel. So I, first of all, I invite my co-moderator, Dr. Rohan. And he will be here for me for some time. Hi, ma'am. Thank you so much. Hello. Hi, Alka, ma'am. Glad to be able to uh, hear you. In fact, uh, this near metonym near yeah. is actually one <laughs> thing for MOS and and he's managing uh, committee member for MSR too. Yeah. Hello. Yeah, ma'am. So, so here I ask Rohan to just say a few words. So yeah, Pragati Man, thank you for your kind uh, introduction. In fact, as I was just saying that the maternal neomis was something that, something that is also very close to me because recently we had a really difficult case. And in fact, Dr. Saraugi himself was there with us to handle that case. And it's something that brought to the forefront that these are cases where we need the expertise of all our seniors and all the uh, uh, gynecologists who are actually experienced this firsthand and it's for people like me who are quite junior in the field to learn from them to learn from their experiences so with these things we always get a chance to learn and in fact it was my final year when my mother had come to see me operate and i was like it's a simple cesarean let me show my it's, mother uh, it's going, it's agility but yes, net, net is going net. operate that case beautifully only because I knew my mother was around to give me that moral support. And sometimes just something as a little bit of a call for help can be so helpful in uh, handling all these cases. So without taking too much time, I'm going to hand over back to Dr. Pragati, ma'am, uh, to start the moderation for this session. 
प्रगति मैम यू आर म्यूटेड करेंटली या ओके हेलो या सो आई इनवाइट डॉक्टर आबरानी सिंह आर फर्स्ट चेयरपर्सन she is professor obgy sk medical college muzaffarpur she is she was president of obgy society patna chairperson for quiz committee foxy she is executive member of national isopav and teaching experience of more than 25 years she had many publications in national and state journals and she has contributed chapter to foxy publications and she is joint secretary of aicug 2014 so ma'am please welcome for today's uh, webinar first and our second and uh, chairperson dr girija wal our own dr girija she is professor of obgy bharti vidyapeeth pune and consultant cloud 9 apollo hospital pune she is director for girija hospital and fertility center and she has many awards she has edited she has received the umranikar award and she was member of steering committee of world organization gestosis and assistant coordinator for national eclampsia registry and chairman for medical disorder in pregnancy committee of foxy she was joint secretary of foxy as well as national mentor for laksha program and presently she is contesting for vice president of foxy and we wish her all the very best for her venture so i hand over mic to chairperson hello thank you uh, thank you pragati yeah. uh, indeed first i would like to thank amox for inviting me to chair this webinar on a very important subject neom miss maternal cases a subject which is very close to my heart working in a government medical college we quite often come across these cases with a workload of around 9500 cases per year we actually come across many cases of this placenta accreta spectra so now to set the ball rolling i introduce our first panelist dr alka kriplani I can say she is a colossal figure in the field of obstetrics and gynecology, an excellent teacher, a surgeon par excellence, and of course, an excellent human being. Coming to her professional association, she has been the president Foxy, and I had the privilege to work under her as chairperson of the quiz committee at that time. She has been the president of Gynecological Endocrine Society of India, president Delhi Gynecological Endoscopic Society. and also of association of obstetrics and gynecologists of delhi she has been the editor of asian journal of obstetrics and gynecological practice vice president of foxy and national corresponding editor apart from this she has so many laurels and awards to her credit i know she is padma shri also so it's now my time to welcome padma shri dr alka kriplani so pragati May I request Dr. Girija Wa to now introduce Dr. Saraogi. Dr. Saraogi is known to this part of Maharashtra as the joy of the Bhushma Pitamaha of experience, patience, and perseverance. It's indeed a pleasure for me to speak about Sir today. who has been the ex honorary professor of the said gs medical college and came hospital mumbai and the ex honorary and hod of the dr r n cooper hospital mumbai which are listening to always with great um, respect he is a senior consultant currently at the nanavati hospitals and director of the saraogi group of hospitals past president malad medical association past president and founder member of the association of fellow gynecologists managing trustee association of fellow gynecologists and this is a wonderful organization which brings about very practical tips for day to day practitioners undergraduate and a postgraduate teacher written several chapters and books and especially on some issues such as hiv in pregnancy has been an award awardee at the uh, foxy korean award and we all know that all these seniors have been such inspiration to us with so many publications and paper presentations and i have heard some sir sir's presentation sometimes as a young gynecologist and is also the president of society of vaginal surgeons of india and today i'm sure the audience is going to be really, really gifted by such a wonderful speaker who is based on his own experience and we are really going to enjoy this session now uh, well to introduce dr jay prakash b patel 
Uh, he is a DNB from Christian Fellowship Hospital, Odan Chantram, Tamil Nadu. He worked as HOD in RDT Hospital, Kalyandurg. He worked with Spanish and Indian surgeons during this period. And he has the experience of monitoring more than 20,000 deliveries during his tenure. He is also a consultant, laparoscopy and pelvic surgeon. He is a director of Betadur Hospital, an advanced 3D laparoscopic center. And he has been a teaching faculty and guide to DNB in RTD Hospital, Bathalpalli. And whatever I know about him, what I have gathered in a few in conversation in few minutes before that, I know he's working in a rural area where he's handling all sorts of numerous cases and we'll be really happy to hear from you. Okay, welcome Dr. Jay Prakash B. Patel. Thank you, ma'am. Oh, over to Pragati. Yes, yes. Thank you. So let's begin. That's the ball has already started to be rolled. I'm here. So our first webinar on nocturnal nearness lessons learned. So we will be taking placenta accreta spectrum. And I'm really grateful to MOGS, Dr. Nandita ma'am. Just on one call, she has agreed and given me a full hand to do this my favorite topic. My favorite topic. Hello. Dear, so, dear. Hello. Hello. I am able to hear now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All settled. Let's Pratiti, proceed. Everybody is fine. Request yeah. You to please keep it as a full screen. Yeah. 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 Full screen. Yes. Play, play button, madam. Play. Go to yeah. play. No, no, not that. Yes, Go yes. To yes. Play. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That one. Yeah. That's fine. That's, huh. So, maternal near miss. What is near miss? I can't see myself. Near miss is an unplanned event which did not result in any organ injury or any organ damage, but it had a potential. So, Near miss is a case when a woman nearly died but survived a complication that occurred during pregnancy, childbirth or within 42 days of termination of pregnancy. Women can survive a life-threatening condition during pregnancy, during abortion, during childbirth or within 42 days of pregnancy termination irrespective of receiving emergency medical or surgical interventions. So maternal near miss is a very good indicator for health system. It assumes better indicator than maternal mortality for designing, monitoring and follow up the evaluation of safe motherhood program. And main causes of near miss can be hemorrhage, hypertensive disorders, sepsis, obstructive labor, and sometimes it's used for identifying health system failures. So when we say near miss, whenever there is a maternal mortality, lots of cry and hue is there. The obstetrician who had faced the mortality has to pay a very big price for mortality. In terms of name, fame, money, litigations, mob violence, and so on. But when she had near miss, a condition which has, when she has snatched away the patient for maternal mortality, it's not discussed, it's not honored. And there are so many near miss cases under one maternal mortality. So every obstetrician who is having a case and she has brought her back from the uh, maternal, she has uh, clutched her back from a case from a maternal mortality is really a proud moment and we obstetrician have added a lot for globally improving the maternal health and so overall indicator of health. So I always say we have to save life of the patient not only the uterus many times we have to fight and bring her back we have to save the patient. So this is the placenta uh, accreta spectrum. So my first question for Dr. Alka Pratani, what is placenta accreta spectrum and what are the causes? Hello? Hello? Dr. Alka, I think she has dropped out. Uh, maybe move on to uh, someone else. We'll just check with her. So, Dr. Sarogi, you can take what is placenta accreta spectrum and what are the causes? Thanks, Girija, Dr. for Sarogi. that lovely introduction. 
and thanks pragati for asking me this question good evening audience before we go to this question let me tell you few things about placenta first and foremost let's understand placenta in greek is called as plakos that means flat cake we all are here only because of placenta our placenta behaved properly that is why we all are here human placenta it is discoidal deciduate villus hemochorial structure now let's go back to your question in olden days we used to call morbidly aderent placenta now figo consensus guideline have mentioned that it should be called as placenta accreta spectrum this includes placenta accreta properly then it includes placenta increta and placenta percreta can you come back to your question in the case please pragati yeah yeah what is placenta accreta and what are the causes see basically placenta accreta is when placenta has invaded decidua it has gone to decidua basalis but not gone into the myometrium increta is when it has invaded the myometrium and percreta is when it has invaded not only the myometrium even the peritoneum and maybe adjacent visceral structures now incidence of placenta accreta once upon a time was very low now with number of cesarean sections okay. rising what are the causes the incidence, to this yeah the incidence of am i audible pragati yes ma'am no, hello now, now you are audible you were lost from uh, your audibility was okay. lost so Please next come. next question can come to me after yeah. yes ma'am okay 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 no okay. so okay. so placenta accreta incidence is rising now yeah uh, it is said that it is almost 8 to 10 cases per 10000 deliveries <laughs> that is the situation today of placenta accreta increta percreta now when we talk about causes of placenta accreta there can be various reasons behind accreta increta percreta any anything which causes placenta previa can result into placenta accreta increta percreta now for example high parity advanced maternal age Hello. particularly can you hear me yes yes advanced maternal age particularly more than 35 years high level of alpha fetoproteins high level of beta hcg septic endometritis however there can be certain uterine causes for example uterine malformation adenomyosis submucous fibroids previous surgeries may be cesarean section now following one cesarean the chances of accreta are 3% with second cesarean it is 11% with third cesarean it can go up to 40% with fourth cesarean 61% and with fifth cesarean it can go up to 69% other scarred uterus is myomectomy Asherman syndrome, DNC, MRP, corneal dissection, lateral metroplasty, and Strassman's unification operation. However, other non-surgical causes can be, as Nandita rightly said, IVF pregnancies. Difficult to say why it occurs. Maybe because chances of twins and multiple gestation is more. It can occur following uterine artery embolization. It can occur following uh, chemotherapy, etc. So these are the various causes right. which can right. result in right. placenta. Right. Sometimes right. small, right. small history of missed patient give history of uh, MTPs, but they never give history that they have any time phase perforations or something, and they can lead to focal accretas, right. and that can be really undiagnosed, and it's a really nightmare in, uh, during a C-section. So this is our first case. She is third gravida, para one, live one child with 36 weeks gestation, diagnosed with placenta accreta, anterior. Doctor was done. Adherence was not detected. Planned section was done at 37 weeks. Incision was taken just above placenta. Female of 2.5 kg was delivered. Placenta was not separated. Bleeding continued from lower segment and cervix. So what next, Doctor Alka Kriplani? 
Yeah. So at the time of cesarean, and uh, there are many do's and don'ts. Since uh, we have quite a significant, I won't say very large, but good experience of managing placenta accreta. So from point of view, when you start cesarean, I would like to put up my my experience of these cases. Always take consent for hysterectomy. Always take. consent for hysterectomy because majority of bad placenta accreta they land up in hysterectomy on uh, day after tomorrow i have posted a patient i did her adenomyomectomy and removed nine fibroids and she became pregnant and now she had landed up she has landed up in placenta accreta so she is a infertile 34 years female so patient sometimes feel you know very sad but it is very important to tell them in a case of accreta you may land up in hysterectomy as life saving and whenever mri tells us it is per accreta or in the bladder we always take consent because whenever bladder is involved we believe in removing that part of bladder rather than struggling with the dissection so once one opens at the time of cesarean the first thing is never touch the lower uterine segment do a cesarean Uh, give the scar above in the upper segment. Nowadays, we have started even giving a transverse or a fundal incision up in the far away from the placenta. The moment you touch the lower segment or that vascular area, and it bleeds like hell. So remove the baby. And in this case, as you presented very nicely, somebody took out the baby by uh, upper segment uh, cesarean, and now the placenta is inside. So. if it is a kind of conservative surgery so when you remove this placenta and there may be so don't do the mistake of removing the placenta first of all if you see too much of vascularity we go in systematic devascularization and you will see it is not the uterine mostly the blood is coming from the pelvic floor vasculature so and uh, beforehand one can prepare like in all india institute we always we had a project so they were coming and they were putting these catheters balloons so you do the surgery if she bleeds a lot they inflate the balloon after surgery you deflate the balloon and check if she is still bleeding then you do embolization otherwise only ballooning inflation may suffice for your bleeding problem thirdly keep lot of blood in hand and it is not only in blood once the massive transfusion starts after four blood transfusion you have to give 1 1 1 ratio means one rbc one ffp one prp so you balance the coagulation factors otherwise number of times you will see so many blood transfusions are given so one has to manage these massive transfusion patients secondly if the patient is a multi and you have decided elective hysterectomies nowadays again with so many mistakes we have learned we go for posterior approach for hysterectomy what does that mean we don't touch the placenta we give a posterior incision somebody pushes the pouch of douglas with a sponge holder give an incision posteriorly below the cervix and then come anterior and to the vessels you will see lot of time lot of blood can be saved by this approach secondly don't be in a hurry to remove placenta first ligate we have ligasure ligasure helps a lot in you know coagulating those big vessels and we always keep every cell that is from johnson and johnson on the table you make it these are the ways to tackle massive hemorrhage so embolization but nowadays without embolization you do balloon inflation if required only then embolization if these things are not available systemic devascularization and for conservative surgery remove placenta and uh, many times if it is a localized adherent then what we do segmental resection and if you are for conservative surgery we do the resection of the part where placenta is uh, you know partly buried and then repair it otherwise it is or cho sutures so you take square knot sutures these are all the ways but tell, i tell you majority of time in a case of severe placenta accreta you have to go for hysterectomy as life saving many colleagues believe 
that you remove the fetus leave uh, close the wound and leave the placenta there only i also have good experience of this what happens in 3 4 5 weeks time she may expel placenta just watch the patient with weekly tlc and for development of sepsis but with this approach sometimes patient goes in septicemia or they come in odd hours with severe hemorrhage so these are pros and cons i personally believe in tackling in one sitting so give incision in the upper segment pains takingly take care of all the bleeders go for posterior approach and if you can put a tourniquet that is very nice i will tell you one secret one patient required 16 blood transfusions we could barely save her after that if somebody is putting a uh, fingers in the vagina and showing you and showing you the fornices it really helps coming from posterior to anterior those big bleeders can be you know nicely and keep lot of blood transfusions ready in placenta accreta if you have a high risk patient like day after tomorrow i have my own operated patient of adenomyosis she is infertile and i have told her i might require hysterectomy is life saving you have to arrange for uh, many many blood transfusions and and it should be done in the routine hours in the morning when you are not tired many times even in best of the hands they do bleed a lot and then i have personal experience of aorta clamping so again nothing is you know hard uh, 100% success aorta clamping few cases we could manage one case they had uh, lumbar artery puncture and she bled from that point we had to call a cardiac surgeon who did decron mesh so my dear friend dr pili who is an excellent surgeon he told me that he applies simple clamps towards both uh, common iliacs but uh, i find it little you know difficult in practice because if you clamp a vessel there is serious risk of uh, thrombosis beyond a certain point and pitrecin is also useful pitrecin can also be used you have to be very careful it doesn't go in a vessel so all these cases 50 60 i have managed there are so many lessons learned for a surgeon they bleed a lot they always take consent for hysterectomy if it is conservative even then give the incision in the upper part don't touch the lower part because the moment it starts bleeding once the baby is out after that take care of the bleeders go through posterior approach there are so many do's and don'ts in the literature some people say put two tourniquets and this tourniquet or santoshi clamps they also if you can apply they may help but i have seen in practice tell your assistant to put a hand in the vagina and show you fornicate start hysterectomy posteriorly these things help a lot if you want to be conservative then you can excise the focal segment if it is coming to the bladder we incise along with that you know that part of the bladder is excised bleeders are taken care and bladder can be repaired there is no problem in it because it is usually at the fundus where bladder goes if you have doubt that it is up to the lower part then we call urologist and they do stenting but that usually is not required and it is just short of the bladder many times you will see huge blood vessels so pains taking either with ligasure or pitrecin or you ligate all those vessels then only start your surgery that way lot of blood is saved if you have facility for aorta clamping as i said number of times we used to call them but again everything has its own like aorta clamping has its own issues as i said once i saw lumbar artery so these are the do's and don'ts and dr sarogi i think he is also an excellent surgeon with vast experience he he, he can uh, you know deliberate on his experiences and there is another if you are not very confident and you see huge blood vessels just do upper segment classical cesarean close the wound leave the patient there are many people number of okay, the studies in the literature at second sitting they do hysterectomy after 2 to 3 weeks so that by that time vascularity has gone very low and methotrexate has no evidence but some cases you find you feel like when you are leaving the placenta give methotrexate sometimes they expel faster otherwise evidence is not in favor of methotrexate post surgery so there are three things one is you go for conservative surgery one is you go for hysterectomy and third is you do your cesarean classical and leave the patient close her down and weekly follow up very carefully 
many times within few weeks she expels placenta and nothing nothing happens and if you are planning to leave placenta don't touch and don't separate any part once a part is separated the way she starts bleeding then you cannot it is a irreversible stage then you have to manage bleeding so yes, these madam. are the things which i have yeah, learned yeah. in these yeah. surgeries right. never yes. lost a patient till date one patient i had to give 16 transfusion she came from singapore on my name and she took the baby without her uterus quick and decision making man, you have to yes. do hysterectomy time is uh, every minute is important and so we have to move on yeah so madam yes. uh, when when we are doing many time classical section we do and we don't touch placenta many time if placenta is not touched even blood losses is in under control and we can move ahead so dr sarogi let me know whether internal cardiac artery ligation or uae is preferable or is better what is your experience no. now as far as this case is concerned you are accidentally caught on the table am i right <laughs> you are not expecting yes. that it is present accreta you are accidentally caught now once you have decided there are two ways of dealing with this one is a non conservative approach that is you go ahead with hysterectomy with placenta in c2 and not suturing the baby if you have decided that then please don't bother to suture the upper segment apply clamps and the procedure is clamp cut and drop, drop. that means don't even Slide bother it, to it. transfix clamp cut and drop yes. go ahead till you read the uterine arteries once you have read the uterine artery your incision which is there opened one that will help you in finding out which is the lower segment and you can go ahead with doing hysterectomy mind you remember one simple principle if it's a placenta previa lying in lower segment doing subtotal hysterectomy has got no role because part of placenta will be left behind and it will continue to bleed if you think of conservative management in that case as madam rightly said you can leave the placenta inside if she is not bleeding leave it as it is explain everything to the patient and patient's relatives and she should be under close monitoring maybe up to 2 to 3 weeks till the placenta necrosis and comes out second method is extirpative that means you try to separate the placenta and try to remove but invariably i am sure if it is one of the accreta okay. intra percreta you will end up with hysterectomy massive with massive blood massive hemorrhage yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. third possibility if it's a focal one then as madam rightly said that you can try and dissect it out along with the myometrium in that reason and suture back the myometrium and fourth is three p's that means first p is out where you have done localization second one is uh, you can do vascular closure now for example in time like ligation there is no rule of uterine artery ligation in these cases unless until you really dissect the bladder down and go lower down for uterine artery ligation otherwise ideal thing is internal like artery ligation you have opened the patient if possible try to do bilateral ligation rather than unilateral ligation and remember one simple thing after doing uterine uh, internal like ligation within about 8 to 9 minutes collaterals establish again but full collaterals to establish like a normal thing takes about 45 minutes the basic idea of doing internal like ligation is the pulse pressure reduces when the pulse pressure reduces the clotting mechanism will occur so ideally you should try to do bilateral internal like ligation one more important thing in internal like ligation is it should be always anterior division <laughs> and not the common uh, anterior Uh, uh, internal like artery. The reason behind it is the posterior division when it Surprise. it is given out. If you ligate the common trunk of internal iliac artery, the posterior trunk has got ilio lumbar artery, which anastomoses with lumbar artery of the aorta. similarly it has lateral sacral artery which anastomoses with middle sacral artery of aorta so there is no point in ligating the common trunk of internal like artery you should always ligate the 
anterior division of internal iliac artery because the posterior division is given out immediately after the bifurcation of common iliac artery so remember that the basic idea is to reduce the pulse pressure when you do bilateral ligation the blood flow also decreases by 50% the pulse pressure decreases and it helps in clotting up the blood now in this case there is no point in trying you try an artery embolization because there is no time patient is already on the table yeah. however if you have known that patient has got placenta accreta or morbidly adherent placenta in that case there are certain things which you have to keep in mind luckily this patient is not a transferred patient from somewhere she is known to you so localize the placenta properly what is the exact position of placenta patient should be operated in an institute preferably with a cancer surgeon with you because you don't know if it is percret it may have invaded the intestine or the bladder so preferably a cancer surgeon should be there there should be enough blood available blood. there should That's be it. icu facility available post operatively if possible That's you can do ureteric stenting in advance take proper consent from the patient for hysterectomy and channel like ligation and any other thing which we have to do and once you start the procedure you have localized the placenta so you make an incision higher up maybe at the fundus or classical cesarean scar but before doing that there are certain things which can be done you can clamp cut and transfix both round ligament you can find out the bladder and uterovesical folded peritoneum can be pushed to behind push down and so that bladder has gone down and then you go ahead with uh, classical cesarean deliver the baby and then clamp cut and drop so till you come yeah. to the uterine and then go ahead with hysterectomy to right if so there is bladder, is if there is bladder involvement you can do intentional cystostomy visualize both the ureteric openings if required you can do ureteric catheterization or stenting if it was not done earlier and if there is bladder involvement you can remove that much part of the bladder finish up with your hysterectomy part and then suture the bladder that's it yes sir uh, so really i would like to add one thing dr sarogi has so nicely explained internal iliac ligation should always be beyond posterior more commonly number of times we have seen patients if it ligation is done very high and the post above posterior posterior division supplies the whole the buttock in the gluteus maximus and these muscles patients are in the ward for months with necrosis of the you know back muscles so it is very very important that it should be done just above the uterine artery origin very true so so the thing is we should be very thorough with anatomy pelvic anatomy one should be very thorough and should be if you are well versed in doing internal iliac artery then you try otherwise do the wrong ligation to prevent more Thanks complication and more morbidity thank you everybody our laparoscopy everybody teaches now retroperitoneal yeah. dissection yeah. and it yes, is not uh, difficult to go yeah. to region yes madam yes so this is a specimen with postpartum hysterectomy and the baby with no second case we will be going to she is a 34 years third gravida para 2 life 2 with previous two seizures at 32 weeks with placenta accreta spectrum at level 2 scan showed her central placenta previa patient was asymptomatic with no episode of bleeding tv subsequent growth scan at 30th week said placenta anterior reaching up to os with placental lacunae and loss of bladder uterine uh, uterine uh, serosa interface and loss of retroplacental translucency color doppler showed turbulent lacunar flow so plan was to give her a steroid cover admit at 34 week and do termination at 36 to 37 weeks so how should we proceed in such case dr jay prakash i am very sorry oh, uh, to interrupt pragdi can i leave oh Ma'am, we will. We we. I too can't say yes. I don't want to lose you. Lose you. You are giving us thank is. you so much for the welcome. Ma'am, and it's very yeah. nice seeing Sarogi sir and meeting you, Pragati. And yeah, speaking to so, Sarogi sir after a long time. You know, I know. You gave such a good insight. 
Yeah. And she played a Sevak innings. She summarized everything in five really? minutes. So well, and she has given so <laughs> practical tips. I mean, you have made so many mistakes, and Sarogi sir will agree with me. You may call other colleagues, but these surgeons, you know, they have no idea how exactly we should go. And I have seen whenever you call them, they lead to more hemorrhage than like I said. Uh, I I stopped calling for aorta clamping. because if if you are going to operate and somebody has lumbar artery puncture and then they go on and all so so much of time goes so everything has its own pros and cons and we gynecs are very very properly trained in handling these hemorrhages i would say yes madam very if, true. if there is involvement of the intestine and the bladder i have seen think- sir involvement of parametria i have seen involvement of bladder and i have i have uterosacral but somehow i have never seen a case in the intestine and that is really interesting intestine we usually call because intestinal injury leads to lot of potential medical legal issues for that we always you know make colorectal surgeon stand if you are doing intestinal repair but i have never seen intestine on involvement uh, you, your experience is more than mine dr sarogi you are surgeon of surgeons i know that Uh, i have seen very bad parametria involvement which led to so much of bleeding placental tissue in all the pelvic vessels like ca cervix it goes up to the you know pelvic bone the yeah, parametria yeah. is okay. all involved that is a very ugly situation nowadays mri and these radiologists they really tell us how difficult it is going to be and then you prepare accordingly correct Correct, madam. Also, we were in a discussion when the last time went for a Vigo Figo conference. There's a we mentioned we in the pelvic anatomy workshop. He we should do inter like like ligation. So so many. So there we stood up. That we Indians are doing all vascular surgery if required bladder. Whatever we can do, but only thing is to save her life. That's what we have to carry out. So, Doctor Jay Prakash. Yes, ma'am. Hello. First of all, can you hear me? What is role of you? Ha, yeah. Yes, yes. You. We are audible. Yeah. First of all, I would like to thank uh, the office bearers of Amox, Dr. Nandita, ma'am, Dr. Uh, you know, it's it's a great honor to be here because I'm such a junior person and working in a small place in Karnataka. Yes. First, I'll, uh, can we go back to the previous slide? You asked me yes. some question. I think yeah. we skipped that. Yeah. 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 Okay. This question is. <clears throat> most of us face day to day should i manage this case in my small nursing home without icu that is or should we should we should we refer to a bigger center where okay. there is uh, there is a help both from the intensivist and also from the surgical colleagues it's very difficult situation because it's very easy to you know tell that okay shift the patient to a higher center with with all the facilities and let them manage most of the time it is the financial constraints because patient doesn't want to go because of the financial reasons and i have worked in places where we were forced to manage on our own of course with the help of uh, urologists or surgeons or whoever it may be required here comes the importance of preparedness how prepared you are and at the end of the day you may still have to refer because all the things cannot be controlled all the things not in your hand where you can say that okay i'll manage come whatever may in my hospital in my small nursing home if the case is of low risk if her hemoglobin is good if the blood products are available and if you have the skills uh, dr sarogi just fell short of telling the other p one is uh, the three p he was telling uh, the perioperative assessment sir am i right perioperative assessment of the placental right. localization and the devascularization pelvic devascularization and uh, it's a non separation of the placenta just remove and block resect the myometrium and and do these things i want to just share my experience first placenta accreta which i had and how foolish i was at that time and why we should not make such comments i was just fin- i had just finished my dgo and there was one month gap before joining dnb and it's a small nursing home my father was running in a rural place and um, there was a cesarean section retrospectively a uh, patient told me that she had a, uh, a manual removal of placenta in her first pregnancy she lost that baby 
probably there was a septic component as well she conceived and it was a breech presentation i took out the baby and placenta didn't come you know that flamboyance of uh, young surgeon where i said okay i can just sweep out the placenta and there was a torrential bleeding and i just i didn't know what to do i had never done a peripartum hysterectomy i had never seen a peripartum hysterectomy i had just only seen so i just packed the, the three or four mops whichever i had then i was praying what should i do then my anesthetist friend told me chal hysterectomy kar and somehow god gave me that guts that day i did hysterectomy patient survived she still comes with me she was only 19 years old okay this is a foolishness so i was uh, totally unprepared in such situations it's very difficult being getting prepared to manage in your own nursing home without the icu care or without much help you assess what is the extent of the placental invasion whether it involves the bladder whether it is involved as uh, alka madam was telling it has gone to the lateral pelvic wall and are you skilled enough to tackle it without much massive hemorrhage and in case so can you manage the blood products not just rbcs not just the fresh bloods do we have in our place the products do we get the platelets do we get ffps all these things and in case in case eventually i had to refer is somebody ready to take my case all these That's things important. will decide yes yes whether That's somebody important. will take my case so right. keep a word see i have a case like this i may require to send you so please be stand by so all these things will decide again it's a very difficult decision to make uh, one has to decide depending on the case and the scenario so good communication also is very important where yes. you are sending to talk with blood banks that i may require massive transfusions to relatives and not only taking consent even to uh, document the consent is very important ki what are we going to do obstetric hysterectomy is something which is very typical yes. for the patient or the relatives to accept at as if the patient is at early age and not completed her family even if she is completed her family people are not ready uh, for ki just ek delivery as caesar karna hai and you are going to remove the uterus so is not so easily acceptable just one so one word about the ultrasound in diagnosing yeah one yes. minute ma'am ma just before yes, that yes, before yes. we go to ultrasound yeah so no. if you are planning to manage in a small nursing home hmm i will straight away do a cesarean hysterectomy with placenta in situ as sarogi sir rightly said i will not try to do a conservative management where i may have a torrential bleeding and end up with more problem for the patient doing a cesarean hysterectomy right. well prepared cesarean hysterectomy probably easier thing to do rather than doing any conservative method if at all patient desires to retain her uterus for whatever reason then definitely she has to be managed with a multidisciplinary uh, team with a proper setup not in a small nursing home very true very true so what is role of ultrasound in diagnosing placenta accreta spectrum and when and which mode is better dr sarogi yes see what is more important everything depends on what time of gestation patient has come to you yes if patient has come after second trimester yes trans abdominal <clears throat> sonography with yes. the high frequency transducer with the bladder being filled with 200 to 300 ml of fluid and a gentle pressure not very heavy pressure otherwise the diagnosis will go wrong yeah you should do per abdominal sonography however if patient has come in first trimester maybe very early gestation trans vaginal sonography will be more useful than the abdominal because you can pick up ectopic placement of uh, pregnancy in the scar and yes, that, that may is a... later on later on may result into placenta accreta increta or percreta yeah so this if is you again pick the entity Mm -hmm. yeah in that case you can counsel the relatives and the patient and decide accordingly whether you want to terminate the pregnancy at that stage which is much easier or if they are willing to take a chance you can try it out may i come in here sir yeah 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 sure sure sir sure. sir i i i always uh, convince my patients to undergo scan as soon as their upt is positive of course Uh, apart from dating and ruling out ectopics 
it is also that nowadays we are picking up lot of uh, uh, the implantation of this c-section scar it is so easy to manage when they come so early invariably if not accreta they are going to end up as placenta previa you don't want even placenta previa in your practice so for example it is not a very precious pregnancy i would suggest them to go for mtp and probably later do a hysteroscopy see if there is stomosal or anything correct it and then allow her to get pregnant so as sir rightly said first trimester scan as soon as upt is positive i always call upt positive uh, scan it is just two two things dating rollo ectopic ectopic also means uh, implantation in the lower segment that's true because cases of uh, scar pregnancy are increasing and to do a mtp for scar pregnancy is also equally uh, difficult equality yes. we believe torrentially yes. because the bleeding is yes. not arrested with the scar pregnancies so if a patient with a persistent low lying placenta or placenta previa at 32 weeks who remain asymptomatic and additional tvs is recommended at 36 weeks to in, uh, inform discuss about the mode of uh, delivery so according to rch guidelines so these are the how do you i mean diagnose placenta is adherent by ultrasound there is interruption of bladder line in extreme cases there is presence of extra uterine placental masses first trimester sonogram lead to a suspicion when gestational sac is in lower uterine segment and is abnormally close to uterine scar these are the pictures we are telling about the accreta or adherent placenta interruption of placental line and sensitivity is 87 to 95% and specificity is 76 to 78% with ultrasound to detect accreta or percreta so it, when we compare mri with usg which gives accurate diagnosis of adherent placenta what are your experience dr sarogi see basically if you look at mri or experience sonologies the results remain same there is no difference if a good sonologist is there he can yeah. pick up all sorts of uh, morbidly adherent placenta however in sure. certain cases of lateral placenta previa accreta increta percreta or in cases of posterior placenta posterior posterior placenta it yeah. becomes little difficult to pick up uh, morbidly adherent placenta in that yes. case mri may be done or on sonography if you are not very sure then you would like to confirm the diagnosis with the help of mri the basic advantage of mri is even fetal anomalies may be picked up so at right. that particular stage even you will be aware of some fetal anomalies which may be there in the baby so sir so if, if your the, patient if, if there is parametrial invasion that also can be picked up on mri may be difficult on sonography right yeah you were saying ha so if if a patient is a high risk for accreta like previous two or three sections and she has come with a usg report which is not mentioning adherence so will you send her for a uh, mri no not for mri i'll talk to the ultrasonologist okay, so yes. i'll discuss again with the ah. ultrasonography person if the person mm -hmm. is not very experienced i may send the patient for another Second sonography opinion. one of the place right. with Correct. the doctor see doing plain sonography has got no meaning it requires color doppler and if that person also feels then maybe i may not send her for mri but if there is little suspicion i am definitely going to send the patient for mri yeah even if mri say it is not adherent but still one should be prepared to deal with this deadly i mean deadly deadly diagnosis ki what we are going to face caught suddenly on table you don't want to have that risk yes even with negative mri and usg you can again find accreta or adherent placenta which let i had faced you, let me tell you 50% to 65% of the cases yeah. are missed as per figo guidelines very true clearly mentioned they have said that 50% to 65% half to two third of the cases are missed as morbidly adherent placenta so that's a big number so the role the role of ultrasonologists have i mean increased so much in 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 our times because you know just those days we were only like when i started do ultrasound in my dnb training we only see we only saw okay placenta is upper segment or lower upper segment lower segment that's all, yeah that's <laughs> all we, we were not now 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 they are talking about the uh, the 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 legs the 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 
like so many hyperactive like things and, like unis and so many things and 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 definitely so many. it has become now missing mm-hmm. something is 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 a criminal thing now i i work with my with a junior colleague who does exclusively scans he is also a gynecologist and you know so it it is so nice that you know he is concentrating only on the scans so he will tell me sir i have some problem come here so then only otherwise busy obstetrician doing everything doing sonology yes, uh, doing clinical work doing surgical work i don't think in present days scenario is something which we should uh, uh, endorse in fact my time sonography was done to find out whether it is a singleton pregnancy or twins or multiple gestation yes <laughs> it had just come, just come when i passed out my md very okay. true so even i had two small experiences to share my first c section in my private practice in my own hospital when i opened the patient early lying like 22 years back when i opened that time sonography was also not that much general but that same single turn brass and uh, vertex of breach and as i gave incision there was placenta at the neck first case in my private sector and all bloody bloody i had to go through placenta and remove the baby so first case gave me a nightmare and then the things came out well so as far as mri and usg are concerned one one time i had a patient who had previous two section this was a third section she had one live issue and it had the placenta accreta uh, placenta uh, low lying not adherent by usg then i got her mri done mri said adhesion is present and so we planned a planned obstetric hysterectomy because it was a third section and they were easily agreed and i said ki in first she was anemic patient and she had history of infection in her first pregnancy and she had uh, scar dehiscence so maine kaha chalo let's go for obstetric hysterectomy and to my surprise planned hysterectomy was done after classical section and there was not much bleeding and after doing everything everything went on well when i saw the specimen i tried to remove and the placenta came out so <laughs> so in this case usg was saying no adhesion and mri was saying adhesion we followed at the mri and it was not an adhesion so we move to the next case this is fourth gravida para 2 live one and ma'am one minute gravida. yeah ma'am i think your your computer will shut down in 5 minutes just just do something acha okay okay it says okay. it says it will okay. sleep in 5 minutes uh, i don't know if you have to okay. reschedule it otherwise we may have interruption now okay i i'll just call it so the second case Make is fourth grab ha so iska charger likha charger fourth gravid para to live one for one abortion with 16 weeks has come for mtp with tl her first was full term normal delivery second was c section third was mtp and presently she took mtp pills at at 8 weeks and she had bleeding for 2 days but her pregnancy continued and then she, uh, usg said she had single uh, intrauterine pregnancy of 12 weeks with iufd this scan was at 16 weeks of pregnancy so she was admitted in this was admitted in a tertiary care center she has come for mtp with tl 16 weeks and 12 weeks the iufd so patient was given tablet mifi 200 mg followed by trans cervical foley catheter and tablet mizo 100 mg after 48 hours as foley catheter was inflated there was severe bout of bleeding pv and within 15 minutes she became drowsy hypotensive and she was in shock with feeble pulse so what can be the cause dr sarogi looking at the entire history probably it was a scar ectopic sir looks like a scar ectopic or isthmocele ectopic because yes. isthmocele can bleed sir, or chabi mein wahan pe ghar pe hogi mano se bango na Isthmocele can bleed potentially, so probably it was a scar ectopic with history of previous one cesarean scar, and then one MTP done. So probably it's a case of uh, scar ectopic, and that thing must have given way. Scar must have given way, resulting mm-hmm. into hemoperitoneum. Yeah. So we are missing somewhere history that why she didn't have why she didn't expel. uh with first mifepristone and misoprostol and what happened in between that is also need to be followed up yeah, because she, you know, she some, landed up yeah she, she has come for the, mtp and tl she has come for mtp yes, yes ma'am I, i agree i agree i agree uh, completely uh, mifepristone misoprostol she didn't expel and what happened somebody should have put their mind there and then did a proper ultrasound 
and see Haan, that what, what was wrong with that. This what, what, what was wrong there? What these patients take Mifi and Mizo and then they bleed yes. and they think the tongue is things are done and they don't visit yes. also the doctor. Same yes. thing happened with this yes. patient. So she was uh, she yes, has exactly. come to tertiary care center for MTPTL. Now up ahead, when the PP was done, placental bit were felt to ex examining fingers. POCs were removed, neutrotonics were given, but bleeding did not stop. She was yes. pouring like anything. Decision of laparotomy was taken as bleeding was profuse. On opening, uterus was bulky. There was no rent. There was no hemoperitoneum. Bladder was pulled up to left side. Obstetric hysterectomy was done. Bladder was injured in accidentally while opening vaginal vault. So rectum was also adherent to vault posteriorly. So retroperitoneum was opened and dissected. Leaders were ligated, vault were closed, ureters were rechecked, and intra abdominal and retroperitoneal drains were kept, and abdomen was closed. So, this patient was on 20 for 24 hours. She was given massive transfusions, inotropes were given, and patient recovered and discharged with folly scatter on day 10. And her histopathocamas placenta accreta. So, this was a, again a near miss case. At just 16 weeks, it was a near miss. So just to bring this near miss ahead, I have brought kept this case that we can face problem during termination also if placenta is adherent. You want as, to add something? As Sarav, yes, huh? Saravji said rightly. Rightly said this probably was a scar ectopic and then it has become a creta. The point is we can have torrential bleeding not in second trimester even in first trimester we can have mm -hmm. torrential bleeding. But good thing is first trimester bleedings can be tackled with foley catheter, like you know in front the. Fully to 30, 40, 50 ml, yeah. and most of the Only time, you know, the cavity balloon is small tamponade. enough. Balloon tamponade, like balloon tamponade with catheter. Yeah, with balloon yes. tamponade so that can be tackled with first because. trimester because most of, sometimes uh, I have been referred to cases where they, they just went in to do with a Malvin vacuum aspirator and she bled like anything, like anything. and then they referred the cases to me. So those yes. things usually you can tackle by balloon tamponade, but second trimester it may not work. As you said, what you've done is absolutely right thing, opening the patient up. And then uh, going ahead with the hysterectomy is, is just what was required. The over-the-counter availability of empty pill kit is is something disaster which which should be taken very very seriously. I even though it's first trimester uh, abortions even with six weeks seven weeks. First of all, I never give empty pill kit that is mesoprostol mesoprostol without doing an ultrasound. Never. Number one. Number two, I always take a consent that they have been they are, they are taking under supervision and they will report it to me. Minimum investigations like what is our blood group and CBC and creatinine. Minimum investigations have to get it done. Then consent is taken, and I always always insist on following up with a scan to see that endometrial thickness is less than 15 millimeters. Right. If it is more than 50 millimeters, if it continues to have spotting, I'll do MVA. That's a different topic altogether. But then never give empty pill without doing a proper ultrasound. Whether it is six weeks or whatever, you may end up with a disaster. I tell them, they say, I, I can get it from chemical uh, chemist shop. I say, please go and get it. I am not the one who is going to give. I always do ultrasound and then do, uh, uh, do prescribe the uh, tablets. That's true. That's true. So we have to be careful there. Yeah. So any precautions or variations while doing a cesarean section with placenta accreta? See, Doctor, first and foremost, yeah, first yeah. And foremost, you have planned surgery for this particular patient. That means the diagnosis has been made in advance. Correct anemia. That's one of the major points which has to be taken into consideration. Now you have two choices, either go ahead with cesarean section at 34 weeks or you do it at about 36 to 37 weeks. Now how to decide about that? You do an ultrasonography and if you find that cervical length is more than 30 millimeters, you can wait beyond 34 weeks. If you find cervical length less than 30 millimeter, it's advisable to take up the patient for caesarean hysterectomy at that particular moment. So once you have corrected anemia, you have all the other things ready, as I mentioned earlier, your incision 
should be at a higher level so you have marked the placenta where exactly it is you go at a higher level make an incision and follow the steps which i told earlier yes same way you go ahead if patient is in labor now there are few things which you have to keep in mind mm -hmm. when you are doing a hysterectomy in these cases first and foremost vascularity is much more as compared to normal case second thing edema of the tissue is much more so ideally you should apply three clamps not two clamps when you transfix the sutures you do double ligation of the sutures because again chances of cut through of the suture is very high is very far yeah remember if placenta is accreta increta percreta ureters may be lying very near to the cervix Mm -hmm. so chances of damage to the ureter is very high so always after the surgery you try to visualize the ureters yes always look for the peristalsis in the ureters true and don't mind taking help from other branches or from That's same true. same branch you should always ask for a help because at times you require you have to act very fast remember this They, yes yes every minute is and and if you are planning the things you can under uh, have you try an artery balloon may not be embolization but balloon can be put and that balloon is inflated minute the baby is out mm -hmm. you inflate the balloon so that vascular supply goes if mm -hmm. you don't have that facility you go ahead with internal like ligation immediately after the baby is taken out yeah. let the placenta be in situ Mm -hmm. don't bother to suture the classical cesarean scar you can apply sponge holding forcep or green armitage over there to prevent bleeding and go ahead with total hysterectomy taking care of the ovaries and uh, tubes so for skin incision you will go for fanal skin, skin incision will always be vertical vertical always yeah. remember this second thing as far as anesthesia is concerned i believe in one principle if pulse rate is more than the systolic blood pressure i advise anesthetist to go ahead with general anesthesia well lab if pulse rate is more than systolic That's blood pressure go ahead okay. with general anesthesia because i have come across cases where we have taken under spinal and suddenly the blood pressure drops <laughs> down to 60 and then they have to intubate that patient in emergency and manage everything it becomes difficult so i have always made it a point that any surgery the pulse the pulse rate is higher than the systolic blood pressure i advise the anesthetist please give general anesthesia rather than spinal yes and if if uh, dr prakash if you are working in a small setup like i am also working in small setup we should have good communication as we said ki if we want require to shift the patient if we require yes. anything, any anybody to be on call if not yeah. call at least he should be well informed in advance isn't it so uh, how to be suspicious of placenta accreta syndrome on table if you open and you are seeing a fierce see uterus vascular uterus what are the signs which can tell you this might be a different placenta we are sitting on a bomb what can be the uh, i mean the signs which will tell you yes first of all of course there is a there is a tremendous increase in the vessels yes it, it looks different it looks yes. different it, it doesn't look normal first yeah. thing is you should see that it, it is not normal this is not what i usually see in my c section yes. so first thing you you suspect that something is wrong yes. and i am sure you should have diagnosed placenta previa not all placenta previas are accretas but most 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 accretas are previas yes okay we agree on that so mm -hmm. the moment you see that placenta is low lying be extra careful okay so move away from the placental bed bed placental bed deliver the baby and as sarogi sir rightly said i would i would also exteriorize the uterus i will exteriorize the uterus and just wait patiently see that the 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 placenta previa without accreta usually once the uterus starts contracting at least the upper part of the uterus uh, the uh, okay. placenta will start separating of course lower segment will not separate so i will see for those signs if it is accreta most of the time you will not see any separation and then you would rather presume it to be accreta which in your case eventually turned out to be simple previa 
better to overact rather than you know be very confident that okay i'll take it out and then get into trouble suppose accidentally perpeta was not detected and as you open and if you see a it it is a fierce you trust a fierce things are there can it be close abdomen stop the section take a think again don't enter in the i mean into the ball if you are not able to manage it at a small center so can what what you say can we st stop at that moment then yes. proceeding without preparation and if, if if first of all if you are not confident of managing the show if we you don't stop if at your this level also yes yeah. yes we can stop yeah. just hmm. close and and get out and refer the patient or if we can wait Take the patient call for the help arrange yes. everything and then proceed huh. so, so it is rather safe to do so rather yes rather it is safe to fire. yes and you are putting somebody's life into risk Excellent. and then I, I, that is absolutely not uh, uh, advised so same thing so we can stop if if we find there is no bleeding so we can stop we can cover uterus with warm packs wait for assistant to come supply before proceeding to operative caesar and no if no assistant ready at your place we can even close the incision and we can plan it at the second row so uh, during c section if we have uh, what changes we can do is we can consider extension of incision to mallard or chernies incision keep patient warm consider conversion to general anesthesia as sir said expeditiously close hysterectomy and proceed with hysterectomy assess location and extent of placental invasion visually and if needed with usg evaluate the presence of active bleeding intra abdominal or vaginally and consider alternatives in selected situation like tamponade device or internal calic if undiagnosed placenta accreta so guideline says in under in undiagnosed uh, cases you know i am not able to uh, in the placenta should be left in situ and emergency hysterectomy can be performed what is massive obstetric hemorrhage and what are its complication See, massive obstetric hemorrhage is when hemorrhage is more than thirty-five percent. When it is less than about twenty-five percent, body can manage itself with hemodilution, contraction of the spleen, and RBCs entering into the circulation. But as the bleeding increases, in massive bleeding, the blood pressure drops down to almost seventy, sixty, seventy. and there is air hunger that is the best way to know if patient has air hunger invariably it's a massive hemorrhage or a severe form of hemorrhage and it requires immediate attention okay. and action so it is irreversible now the patient is going from reversible to irreversible shock so we have to not allow patient to go into irreversible shock and we have to be very careful so this is second gravida para one 37 weeks with previous caesar taken for c section uneventful anc period she had past history of dne for retained products usg showed single live intrauterine pregnancy of 36 weeks with placenta fundal and not low lying after extraction of baby and placenta bleeding was present which was more than normal placenta was removed but it was coming in piecemeal still placental bits remained bleeding was out of proportion so diagnosis of focal placenta accreta was made bleeding continued irrespective of uterotonic and tranexamic acid and transfusion patient was slowly landing in shock so decision to close uh, the uh, uterus was taken and with placental uh, pieces in c2 so in such situation how should we monitor the patient and what should be the next line of treatment if we kept placenta in c2 keeping the placenta in situ with bleeding i don't think is a very good idea if there was no bleeding and you are closing the uterus may be acceptable with the balloon tamponade or whatever but if the patient was still bleeding and you have left some cotyledons there i think you are asking for a disaster you are asking for a trouble i don't know sarogi sir yeah huh. i i agree with you jay prakash i totally agree with bleeding you can't afford to in fact i'll give you a nice case at nanavati we had a transferred patient who had delivered vaginally and since the placenta was not coming out she was transferred referred to me at nanavati 
and she was not bleeding i did not do anything except for cutting the umbilical cord keeping part of it in the vagina we gave her methotrexate this is about 25 30 years back gave her methotrexate and gradually over two weeks period the placenta necrosed and came out but if she is bleeding there is no point in keeping anything inside hey, sir, this problem. this bleeding stopped and placental pieces were left inside it was that the bleeding okay. was controlled ah, then it was fo- it was a focal placenta adherent and yeah. so so it was closed after bleeding stopped dr abharani you can also ha- add your comments hello dr abha you want to speak something so so if now if you placental bits are retained and we are closing how are we going to manage this patient and there are chances that patient may have endometritis sepsis she can have secondary pph so um, how will we monitor such patients and what is the role of methotrexate in retained placenta i'll tell you hmm. the idea of methotrexate and use of oxytocin this i am talking about some 35 years back story when there was active management of third stage of labor started we did a trial of injecting oxytocin 5 units with about uh, 10 to 15 ml of normal saline diluted and injected it to umbilical vein directly after delivery of the baby and we found that placenta got separated within 2 to 3 minutes mm-hmm. and uh, it definitely cut short the second stage uh, third stage of labor Okay. Now, methotrexate definitely has a role if it's a living tissue. Methotrexate has no role when it's not a living tissue; it's a dead tissue. Now, in this case, the placental bits which have been left out, they are basically dead. So, role of methotrexate is definitely controversial whether it's going to be useful or it's not going to be useful. Studies over a period have shown that. it has got no role as such whether you give oxytocin whether you give methotrexate they have no role it's nature who takes care causes necrosis of the tissues and gradually the tissue falls off because of avascularity of the tissue so i yes, said out yes pragati i also totally agree with dr saraoghi in our initial practice days we were giving methotrexate we were leaving if some bit placental bits were left behind we were giving methotrexate but of late it has been found that methotrexate has no role in fact there are literature reporting that even it has caused adverse effects in few patients and as we know methotrexate it only acts on actively dividing cells so there is no point in giving methotrexate but initially yes in our practice we have given methotrexate but this patient should be on on strict vigilance that definitely the chances of endometritis and then eventually having a second secondary hemorrhage because of the infection is is pretty high so maybe antibiotic cover for a week or 10 days and then you have to keep watching and probably serial ultrasound uh, examination is, is also warranted hello pragati has uh, dropped out so may i request you to continue please or if possible uh, we can take an audience question can we have the questions yeah so there are a few questions in the or the chat box like there is one question any role of through and through suturing to arrest bleeding from dr manik chandra pratihar dr saraoghi sir your opinion what do you mean by through and through suturing there is nothing like through and through suturing you can do devascularization of the entire thing you yes. can go ahead with the ligation or you can if you can find out a bleeder going through the placenta you can ligate those bleeders yes and that too only if you are leaving the placenta or placental tissue behind otherwise there is no such role i think she was um, he or she was meaning probably they are meaning chow sutures cervical isthmic apposition sutures is there any yes. role of cervical isthmic apposition yes. sutures sir yes definitely it has a role Because, because we I have think, done in a few cases, yeah, it has definite role because it's likely to compress the anterior wall and the posterior wall. Yes, yes. Is that the bleeding will stop? The principle remains same as Joe Sutcher in cases of atonic PPH. Yes. What we used to do, we used to put a dilator in the os, and then we used to give two sets of transverse sutures, one below the other, 
and by that way we have been able to control bleeding in desperate cases as you said no preparation suddenly you land up with a case of placenta previa on the table so in those cases we have tried and in some we have received good results sir okay now next question what is the significance of beta hcg monitoring and how should it be done following a case of accreta within the within c2 placenta this is from aditi rajkire any role of beta hcg monitoring after you leave the uh, placenta sorry, sir, should take the yeah. this thing because i have no experience. i personally feel there is definite role of beta hcg see ultimately you are uh, uh, playing in dark you really don't know if you really look at the beta hcg levels they rise up to 12 weeks and after that the beta hcg levels start falling if you do beta hcg at term and if it is more and after few days you find beta hcg levels are coming down you feel happy ki okay placenta is being excreted or the pieces are being excreted otherwise as such not major role but yes it is definitely reassuring to you that should uh, we go for monitoring sir should we go yes, for there's monitoring no hey, there is no harm in monitoring how frequently sir how frequently uh, every week every week okay sir So now there's another question from Colombo from Dr. Ruxan. Is there any new thing in the etiology of MAP? IVF these days. IVF. Yes. That's that's already discussed. No, but so. And on, on, on histoscopy, they do lateral metroplasty. Yeah. They have been correcting yes. Asham syndrome also. Yes, yes, yes. So all those definitely have a role in uh, MAP. Okay. Sir, Now there's another question. Yeah. Okay. One minute. One minute, ma'am. Sure, 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 Dr. Japrakash. Sure. Ma'am, whether the placenta accreta incidence is definitely increased in I IVF, but is it because the organ itself was at fault, or is it the procedure related? Probably it is not nothing to do with the pro procedure related, unless as uh, Saragi sir rightly said, you have done some some operative procedure on on endometrium or. Uh, with the histoscope or BNC or whatever. Otherwise, IVF per se should not be blamed. I think no, it is no, probably the no, disease. No, and no Jay Prakash, I'll tell you they have done a study. Sir? They have compared it with non-IVF cases, and they have found incidence of IVF related is 1.2 percent following IVF yes. chances of placenta accreta. While without doing IVF and the natural conception chances, they found were 0.12 percent. No, correct, sir, but what I feel is the the very reason patient has gone for IVF okay. probably you know the histoscopy has been done lateral metroplasty may yeah. have been so some inherent problem in the in the uterus probably could be or they already had some genetic problem yes. that's the reason they didn't conceive see genetic exactly. is one thing which may be responsible for placenta accreta increta percreta yes sir. Lesson there are two previous. questions on diagnosis. First is what is the optimal time to diagnose and by what means, and the second is how to know PAS before labour. These are the two questions on diagnosis. No ultrasound, ultrasound, ultrasound. In most of the uh, situations, even as early as we have already discussed, even in the first trimester also, we can suspect that if the implantation has occurred in the lower segment. we can start suspecting that it may be previa and eventually may go for accreta and then of course the loss of uh, the hypoechoic line and then of course doppler and then the lacune so many things uh, we can do but again ultrasound the route may change first trimester you want to do ultra uh, transvaginal then eventually transabdominal this suspicion is already suspicion in first trimester suspicion in first trimester and finally at 32 weeks if at all there is these days we don't say migration but at all at 32 weeks i think we will be clear whether it is placenta accreta or not is it I even in second trimester ma'am yes even in second trimester the presence of lacune itself is, is a high suspicion yes even the in early pregnancy yes better one need to be very patient in looking for these signs if you so are very now, impatient and just want to run around with your probe then probably you will not pick it up you need to be patient if you have suspicion definitely follow them up and look completely and use a high frequency probe to see with doppler that will definitely uh, 
Uh, you can you can pick it up even in second trimester. Not not Very even good. required to so, wait till thirty two weeks. So now over to Pragati. I think she has. Hi, yeah, I I was she's back. Out. Huh? Yeah, yeah. So thank you, Doctor Abha, for continuing the show. So next question is: What is role of stepwise by devascularization in placenta tracheal, which we have already discussed? Anybody want to say uh, add something, Doctor Jayaprakash? Doctor Abha, honey, you can also add your experience. Yeah, as sir, Doctor Sarogi has already said that yes, uh, yeah, yes, there is bilateral also with the nine minutes circulation. There is not time. much role of uterine artery unless and until we go yes. down and take the descending uh, cervical branch. Then only there is some role, and it's very difficult to do that because the uter yes. the lower segment is so friable, so, so it's 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 bleeding. It's very difficult. So if at all we have to do, we should tie the anterior division of the internal iliac artery after. Yes. it has given off the posterior branch that is very important and that was that a very, very important, important part and a take home yes. message that we have yes. to tie the anterior division about 2.5 cm from the origin that's true one more that's thing true. i just want to put in see in some of the even in up to date i was just looking that you know uh, internal leg -like ligation is a very time consuming procedure hmm. i i just want to say uh, i'm very sorry internal leg -like ligation should be done very fast i mean somebody who can do in maybe 3 3 minutes to 4 minutes in each side uh, should only attempt it if you are taking 30 minutes to do a internal iliac -like ligation then the whole don't purpose do. is lost <laughs> and yes. don't better don't do please don't do so you should be able to do within 3 to 5 minutes maximum 5 minutes on, on each side that's the best way to it's... learn internal iliac -like ligation is whenever you are taking her up a patient for cesarean section a senior should wash up assist the junior and let first time let them see the posterior compartment anatomy yes they are the internal leg -like arteries second time open the peritoneum and visualize everything third time visualize the relation between ureter and common iliac -like. fourth time yes. visualize from external leg -like, internal leg -like. and fifth time pass a mixture and try to separate yes. the internal leg -like. Correct. Next time, probably pass a ligature through extra uh, internal leg, but don't like it. Correct. Then do it on left side. This uh -huh. is the best way to train a resident. Correct. When I was when I was at Cooper, practically every resident of mine was trained to do internal leg -like ligation. Yes, I fully agree. I fully agree. They should. Sir, uh, Sairogi yes. sir, can I ask you a question? Yes, Girija. I want to know: uh, Have you ever had a mishap of you know trying uh, a wrong vessel instead of the right one while no, they're doing no, the internal that, ligation? That mishap has not occurred, but I was once called, hmm. and uh, internal -like ligation ligation I did on the right side. My assistant tried on the left side. He passed the ligature, but unfortunately injured external iliac vein. Yeah. So the best thing is you have to go properly from lateral to medial side. Lateral, the lateral side there is external iliac -like vein which is likely to be injured, and go gradually with the help of mixture. I tell Correct. always tell my residents to have two things in your consulting uh, in your hospital. One is a mixture, and Correct. second is reverse retractor. You should have yes. reverse retractor, otherwise it becomes very difficult to do internal iliac -like ligation. So yes. always start from lateral to medial, pass the mixture, pass the thread, and ligate it. You don't have to cut the vessel. That's a beauty. So just like yeah. it, they they have to be made to identify four structure from lateral to medial, external leg -like artery, external leg -like vein, internal leg -like artery, and then the ureter. Four mm. things if they identify. Ureter. Yeah, ureter. Four I things if they identify in that order. I don't think uh, you you can have a problem. The Dr. one Jay one thing which this, ma'am. Doctor Jay Prakash, you said it very right, but I'll tell you the current challenge is. that uh, probably the place where you are practicing i don't know you may be having the same kind of a challenge women are coming very obese nowadays obesity definitely causes abnormalities in understanding these vessels easily and when we used to have those thin lanky patients coming to our residency days they don't happen to come to you now in your <laughs> <laughs> very true doctor girija that's true yeah yeah and and when patient is it already in pph or when patient is bleeding it is very difficult to see everything and to manage and very rightly said by dr jay prakash that it should be done in 4 to 5 minute then it's useful otherwise if you are struggling with internal gallic then better go for hysterectomy if you are not well versed in doing internal gallic if you are able to do that prakash one more thing there are two more things 
Pragati. Yeah, yes, Dr. Girija. Two more things which have been very underrated and that is aortic uh, compression. 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 Very important. Yeah, aortic compression. And even the non-pneumatic sh- anti-shock garments, extremely yes. important. Shock and guard, so guard, many, yeah. these two things really, really help tremendously. If nothing else, you can at least warm up the patient. At least, you know, wipe up something. Somebody has to do it for you. That helps. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, is there any role of balloon tamponade in uh, accretor spectrum? Dr. Jay Prakash, you are a yes, strong follower of balloon. Yes. So, See, is there a placental if, bed bleeding? Placenta, so, yes, if the placenta bed is bleeding and it's, it's not very torrential, definitely we can put a balloon tamponade and then, of course, uh, with that, Probably devascularization, uh, stepwise devascularization methods, it works sometimes. But if, if we are talking about torrential bleeding, you just want then to put a balloon and just want to close. No, 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 no. It is small ooze here and there with your compression ah. sutures or with your figure of eight sutures, it does not stop. You yes. just want to put one more uh, balloon tamponade. Uh, it, it may work in lower segment. Yeah. One more thing I just want to add. I am a b- big fan of Bakri balloon. But for lower segmental bleeding, it is the condom tamponade which works better than yeah, which works better. Yeah. Than so because it's, it's a very true. dynamic, it's a very it's dynamic true. thing. It's a very dynamic thing. It takes shape of uterine cavity. It, yeah, it takes the shape According of the uterine, uterine cavity. That works. That works better. Wonderful for uh, lower segment bleedings. Yeah. Yes. Because Bakri yeah. is very rigid and you, you cannot maneuver it. Yeah. And it sits on one place and then it is very difficult. But for mm-hmm. Itonic PPH, Bakri works fantastic. But for yeah. lower segment, I would prefer a uh, condom company. In fact, we are going to do Pragati? Yeah, yeah, madam. Yeah. Can I Hello? say something? Hello, Dr. Girija. Hello. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. See, while we are talking of all these modalities, one very interesting thing that I saw recently uh, was in uh, St. Petersburg uh-huh. in Russia. Can you hear mm-hmm. me? Yeah, 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 yeah. you're audible. You're audible. So when they have this uh, placenta accretus syndrome and the patient is bleeding, what they do is, is on table, they pick up the uterus up and they actually wrap it with a bandage. There's a rolling bandage which is going mm-hmm. from down to up and up to down backwards and tightened. And then after 72 hours, they again revisit it and take it off. After 72 hours? Yeah. Okay, so then they reopen. They reopen the patient, take a small incision and take it out. Dr. So, Girija, yes, have you tried it? Mm-hmm. I just tried it as a demonstration. I had a okay. patient on whom we tried and then after half an hour of tamponade, we took it out, patient stopped bleeding. Okay. okay. I, didn't so I have a question. Ma'am, I have a question for Dr. Sarogi. Sir, yes, please. Sir, Dr. Samartram and Dr. Panikar, they have devised these uh, suction yes, cannulas sir. for atonic PPH. And they also claim that it works even in, in, in cases of placenta previa, even in lower segmental bleeding, lower segmental uh, PPH. Uh, do you think it works? Because I'm, I'm a bit scared to use them. Uh, do you think I'll, it may work? I'll tell, you, I'll tell you. I had a discussion with Dr. Panikar about it. And in yes, fact, sir. he has gifted me one of his cannula also. Yes, sir. The basic principle of using their cannula is when you put the cannula inside, majority of the time, let's talk about atonic PPH. Majority of the yes. time, atonicity of the uh, uterus occurs due to retained blood clots. Correct. First and foremost, with that cannula, which is a special cannula with multi perforation. Yes. It sucks all the blood clots, not only the blood clots, because the pressure, negative pressure is maintained for quite some time. The decidua is sucked inside. And when decidua is sucked inside, the bleeding stops automatically because it gets enough time for blood clot formation in those bleeders. So that's the basic principle. I've tried it in one or two cases and it was quite useful. But then I got fed up because keeping that thing for six, uh, uh, half an hour to 45 minutes was little difficult for me. 
And sir, I always have one question. I have never used. Is is its removal that easy? When it sucks up all residue, so is yeah. removal easy? No. What happens? It sucks residue and it blocks the opening of the cannula. Ha. Huh. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. go inside that much. Yes. Yes. But then during removal. Yeah, it's easier. It's easier. Easy you can flush yeah. it. You can flush it. Okay. You flush it with okay. saline. So how to flush? And I couldn't get it. How will we flush when the cannula is inside? When the cannula is inside, you have uh, stopped the mm-hmm. suction machine. There uh-huh. is an opening over there through which you can. So flush you flush. Acha, you flush it off so the openings of come yeah, off yeah. and uh, they will. Okay. Okay. As But Dr. Jayaprakash has said, but also the ionic pH. I have used Shivka's pack, which is the easiest thing. Condom yes. catheter is the easiest thing, fastest thing, yes, and very reliable. Cheapest, cheapest, easiest, fastest can be used by anybody. anybody. So I really tell everybody that when you are having a normal labor patient, you try to give, and just because one step is very important. When you introduce those that Shivka pack inside uterine cavity, and you are inflating. You should pack vaginal cavity, otherwise that whole system yes. comes down. So that has to be told to everybody. Otherwise, everybody is scared that it comes out or it's not effective. But if it is kept in situ in uterine cavity, then it works wonderfully, and you, it prevents so many laparotomies and so many hysterectomies. So the beauty of Shivka's pack is you put in a good amount of saline, maybe about five hundred to seven hundred mL of saline. Yes. Put the saline bottle on the stand, and yeah. as the uterus contracts, there is reverse flow of fluid in the bottle. Yes, that sir. gives you an idea that yes, uterus is contracting and retracting, and then Thank gradually you. you deflate the thing. Yes, sir. Agree, sir. That is the beauty Agree. of shift yeah. back. And sir, one more thing which I use for this condom catheter is catheter tip syringes are there, which are used by urosurgeon. catheter tip syringe they there are 60 cc syringe with those syringes you can fill 300 cc just in less than one minute in spite of putting the iv set and pushing and pumping and pushing it's it, that will be very useful for you dr jayprakash and for all the delegates who are listening catheter tip syringe which is used by uro surgeons that can be tried to fill the shivka's pack and it becomes very easy and very fast to do the things So Pragat, no, they, they also have they also have connectors can which can be put into regular. Yeah, can I add something? Reg- regular When syringes are different. When you are cannula, particularly huh. patient is bleeding. This is Very for the August step. audience. This yes. is basically for August audience. Yes, yes. Huh. IV cannula, the orange IV cannula is G fourteen fourteen gauge, and it the flow rate is three hundred mL per minute. Per minute. and when you use gray one that means gauge 16 the flow rate can be 172 ml per minute when you use green one that is g18 the flow rate can be 76 ml per minute when you use pink g20 the flow rate can be 54 minute uh, 54 ml per minute when you use blue g22 the flow will be 31 ml per minute and when you use lime g24 the flow will be 14 ml per minute if you open the iv set completely this is okay. basically for our august audience that That's is the reason important. we take use g14 and g16 whenever you come across a case of bleeding so with gray what was the flow you said gray with flow gray, will be 172 and, and that is at 16 You said it is yes. yeah it is 16 172 with 16 and with uh, 14 Pink one 300 14 orange orange 300 300 ml 300 at this number i wanted to have I, i okay okay orange one theek hai okay so moving ahead this is the next case and, 30 uh, pragati one more mm-hmm. thing not to forget the obstetric shock index now when yes. the obstetric shock index is 0.9 or more we have to start giving transfusion uh, yeah. you know blood products Yes, blood products are to mainstay. Even rule of thirty, pulse yes. rate increasing by thirty, BP falling by thirty. You will not put less than thirty ml per hour, and respiratory rate more than fifty. It suggests that there is moderate amount of shock. Or yes. at least hundred, hundred, even hundred pulse. You know, hundred systolic. That also tells. Yeah. Yes. So now next case is thirty years gravida for para three. 
with previous three C section, three females. Twenty-two weeks was referred to tertiary care center with severe pain in abdomen, right side, and some uneasiness. When patient arrived, this was a case uh, shared by Dr. Saragi. Patient was in shock and abdomen was distended. USG was suggestive of single live intrauterine fetus of 22 weeks with placenta fund fever with signs of bladder invasion and hemoperitoneum. Sir, you, how you manage this case? I think it will be better you. See, I, I'll tell you this. The major problem is COVID time. Yeah. This and this is a recently done case. This is yeah, a case which sir has done. A placenta perfecta was diagnosed sentinatally. She had been to about four gynecologists who refused to come. Then she started getting severe pain in abdomen. She was admitted in one of the major hospitals in suburbs of uh, Mumbai. Over there, the gynecologist felt that it's difficult to manage for them. So they called me up and patient was transferred to Nanavati Hospital at about 10 p.m. at night. And she was admitted in that hospital since morning 10, 10, 30, 11. When she came, her hemoglobin was almost 4 gram percent. We took her up immediately for exploratory laparotomy. And on laparotomy, I took all the precaution. We had blood ready. We had a urosurgeon ready with us. I made a midline incision, intra-umbilical. We opened up and uh, took a classical caesarean but already about one and a half liters of blood was there in the peritoneal cavity her pulse rate went up to 160 a bp dropped down to 50 we transfused her bladder involvement was there we made a cystostomy removed part of the bladder along with this did an obstetric hysterectomy did internal like ligation hemostasis was achieved and patient was shifted to ic she was given about six to seven blood in OT itself before being shifted to ICU. Sir, may I come in? Yeah, yeah. Sir, much before uh, you could comment what has happened, I was thinking there must have been a delay somewhere. There was a delay, I told you. <laughs> yes, sir. No, that's all. Before you could even tell, I was guessing that there, there was a delay somewhere for whatever reason. I didn't know any context of this thing. Because probably if she had reached you 12 to 4, 24 hours before, probably yeah. this patient would have been saved. It would have been easier. That is it. Yeah, that I is was it. thinking about that. Mm -hmm. Definitely there was a delay. That, that, so is the, that is the difference between near miss and mortality and near miss. Exactly. exactly. There is where we act and the oxidation. Yeah. Yes. See, this, this mortality is counted as a mortality, but if, if this was saved, it, nobody would have thought of this patient. Yes. And so much of things which the all team from referral center, the, the cases, from where the patient is referred to the case, where it is handled, everybody has added their own to save a patient, isn't it? Instead yes, of sir. 10 p.m., if sir had opened at 10 a.m., definitely I'm sure could have been different she had, yeah. it, she, and, it was and, a different ballgame altogether. And, yeah, and this case happened in this COVID situation, sir, told me a month back or a yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. So, very yes. difficult to get everything. Even patients also find it difficult because in these this time we are getting patients from rural places. By the time they reach us, they are adequately dilated and they deliver, which never used to happen before COVID because they had difficulty in reaching to the centers. Yeah, I tell you, any patient who has been transferred, the basic disadvantages are patient may be anemic, patient may be in shock, you don't know the exact diagnosis. There will be severe hypotension. There will be infection. There will be dehydration, acid-base imbalance, electrolyte imbalance, DIC, anatomy is distorted, malpresentation, and there may be renal shutdown. So you have to keep in mind any patient who is being transferred to you to keep in mind about these factors. Before referral, I think, sir, before referral, Whenever somebody calls me that they are sending so and so case, I request them please start to I will end and send. And right. keep, keep those lines running. Oh, I will end. And I of will course, end. as wa Girija ma'am said, uh, if we can uh, arrange an uh, anti shot garment, it will be it will be great. That also helps a lot. Tamil Nadu, one of the Tamil Nadu companies sees manufacturing, which is not very expensive, some six thousand or seven thousand yeah. rupees, if I am not wrong. Girija ma'am? Correct, correct. Yeah. Pardon me? Yes. Kya bolo, sir? And, and, 
नहीं एंटी एंटी शॉक गार्मेंट विच इज आई थिंक मैन्युफैक्चर बाय सम तमिलनाडु कंपनीज इज अबाउट 6 और 7000 रुपीस 6000 and it is reusable it's so easy and very little if you have too many patients you must have at least 3 or 4 in your setup because even you know we did audits in our center even shifting the patient from the labor table to the operation theater if you do it with that uh, garment you will reduce a lot of blood loss yes that's true uh, in many of our maternal morbidity near miss audits we found that even keeping the pulse oximeter and oxygenation at the time of transfer was very important very so these small small things matter to improve matter. survival definitely oxygen is very important hypoxia leading to multiple organ failure and organ injuries can be prevented with proper perfusion and oxygenation and definitely blood transfusions i have i have some suggestion how to prevent isthmosin as the number yes. of cesareans are increasing yeah going from 5% it has gone almost up to 70 75 and 80% mm -hmm. i was reading about isthmosin and the best way to prevent isthmosin is when you suture uterus nowadays we suture uterus in one layer the oh. suture should be 1 cm or 1.2 cm ah. below and above and medially yeah. correct it should, the reason behind it is after fourth day when involution of the uterus is occurring you will find suture line dip, the distance is 4 mm from each other and that should be the correct thing to prevent isthmosis second thing isthmosis will always occur in cases of prolonged labor where lower segment size has increased from 10 cm to 12 13 and your incision goes down when your incision goes down probably part of cervix is also involved in your incision in that case the cervical mucus which comes out after the involution that prevents proper healing third possibility can be severe thinning of the lower segment when you suture in one layer what happens there can be some small holes up appearing so ideally in these cases you should suture in two layers and if it's a retroverted uterus there are good chances of isthmosis formation because placenta the scar uterine scar gets attached to the peritoneum resulting into poor healing of that particular portion of the cesarean scar resulting again into isthmosis so these are the factors which should be kept in mind to prevent isthmosis otherwise chances of isthmosis following two cesareans is almost 60% nowadays so you can imagine how the isthmosis is increasing day by day and we land up with scar ectopic and placenta accreta inquita percreta in fact isthmosis is one of the reason behind secondary infertility menorrhagia yes. postmenopausal bleeding so all these things intermenstrual should also, bleeding yes intermenstrual bleeding isthmosis is known to cause these things one more thing is planning the incision correctly especially in an intrapartum c section correct is very very important because going as low as possible is not the right concept at all you must be an inch away from the reflection of the uv fold so that is the widest okay. portion which has which is easy to heal later if you try to go below that then you are going to because you are going to have descending cervicals on the side and problems of bleeding and so many adam uterus is funnel shaped yeah. more you go down more uh, the more space problem. available becomes less and less yeah absolutely and more difficulties come while delivering the baby also yeah and sir one more thing at the time when you deliver placenta at the time of c section you must examine the placenta also so many times at c section written placenta have been there maybe, maybe succinct ureter lobe has left it behind maybe so had a important ureter lobe was not diagnosed in uh, ANC, and I put my hand inside and found there was another lobe inside. Yeah, sir, I have written a wonderful chapter on abnormal placentation. I will send it to you someday. Yeah, yeah, please. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank
Yeah. <laughs> so, they were so beautiful tips and so important and practical tips given by all faculties really they will really help out even one more thing which i have noted is or i read somewhere ki when we do after removal of placenta we have habit of cleaning the uterine cavity it is mentioned that if you do lot of rubbing of uterine cavity with your mom it, it can do endometritis and it will invite even people go to yes. cervical canal to dilate the canal that bleeding should not i don't know no, why no 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 when the no, menstrual no. blood can come out then why this blood will not come out so it is no need of dilating i will yeah. tell you the reason behind it sometimes membranes may be covering the internal or that can be yes. time that can be in multi para in that case you will get lochiometra and hematometra see by putting your finger or by putting an artery forceps at least you are clearing your doubts about membranes covering the internal loss okay other thing about massive transfusion protocol we have not activated massive transfusion protocol ideally it should be activated the reason behind massive transfusion protocol in a massive bleeding is minute you activate see we cannot have blood testing done for coagulation profile unless until you have teg if you have teg machine then within 20 minutes you will get all the reports about various components of the blood but if you don't have teg machine to find out platelets to find out fibrinogen to find out other factors it will take at least 4 hours you have you can't afford to wait for 4 hours so this massive transfusion protocol came into picture only for two reason one minute you activate it the blood bank person knows that i have to keep four blood six blood eight blood ten bloods ready not only that it should be one 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 as uh, madam alka kriplani rightly said it should be one 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 so you should have ffp ready you should have platelets ready so the blood bank person keeps everything ready minute the bottle is issued at at km we have done it that way minute the protocol is activated the person in the blood bank knows and she will say why only blood you have to take plas- uh, platelet as well as ffp with you ffp platelet as well yes yeah. so that is the situation which occurs and second thing it prevents mortality you cannot afford to wait for all the reports to come and then give all the component therapy so it prevents mortality the ratio is 1 is to 1 is to 1 Yes. so you should always activate massive transfusion protocol it is called as mtp yes mtp yeah so very rightly said so even a massive transfusion also has some complication can somebody put light on massive complication due to massive transfusion or trally 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 basically i wanted to speak of trally only trally so dr jayprakash can you with so many of complication there uh, so many of blood transfusions we can have and we are afraid that we should not land up in transfusion complication leaving aside our accreta or our pph so we have to be very careful because the blood is normally many time given by our staff we are busy with our patient but there should be our proper system in the hospital for monitoring entering and doing all the work to prevent all complication related to uh, massive transfusions like acidosis blood overload Uh, calcium hypocalcemia dic electrolyte imbalances fibrinogen and platelet ratio which is required and acute hemolysis now this trally is a transfusion related acute lung injury lung injury, lung injury. It, can, yeah. it can be fatal so uh, now one thing which doesn't happen in, in massive transfusion especially in small hospitals is documentation nobody knows how yes. many prbc have gone nobody knows how many ffp has yeah. gone nobody knows so unless you make it make make sure that these things labels yeah. are stuck to the case sheet and then you know uh, uh, write the time because everybody yes. is seems to be in yes. panic and yeah. everybody is doing everything 
so yeah. unless one person takes the lead and document it and then write it down you will never know how many have actually gone yes. and what has gone inside so that really is something these, which we need to look at these all cases placenta accreta spectrum is really a case of multidisciplinary case team work it's very important and nowadays this nabh has come on nabh accreditation and that has taught us to do all those uh, you know all those work clerical work of documentation documentation and documentation and we are learning and our staff is also now getting trained in doing all this thing because we have to be very careful with transfusion related reactions pragati it was a very nice slide but you have not added hypothermia Yes. 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 Yes
if the situation does not come under control then other measures like uh, transfer to ot and higher centers should be considered remember too little or too late will you will lose your patient and not to forget the documentation and debriefing expediting shifting of patient to ot evaluating availability of blood and blood products in blood bank may be required to contact many blood banks good anesthetic support you can have second anesthetic also on call because any time you have to shift a patient from uh, spinal to general and if she becomes critical you require a good anesthetist uh, one thing which i discussed last time with one of my colleague was when she was uh, managing a patient with uh, uh, placenta accreta for elective auxiliary hysterectomy sos she said i asked him to put a central line pre, uh, pre i mean uh, pre hand to put a central line if the situation arises this point i liked a lot i told her i am going to discuss this point in our case discussions so we can have a prophylactic uh, central line may, uh, anticipating huge massive hemorrhages surgical assistants urologist surgeon your good obstetric friend experienced people call them or inform them availability of critical care and bed in critical care you might be it is next to your door but is it available additional equipment like cystoscope blood product equipment for massive transfusion and expert person for using this equipments so here we come to an end of our of our panel i am really thankful to all esteemed faculties for putting their inputs to make this topic so important and so interesting and one very important thing for all of our viewers you have been there that's why our program is successful log on for the second webinar on near miss lessons learned which will be on sepsis in pregnancy it will be on 19th of august details and links will be followed now a uh, few take home message because name of our uh, webinar was lessons learned few things which i could gather through all this discussion was as dr alka kriptani said while doing obstetric hysterectomy you can put your hand or fingers through vagina so through the fornix to have a good assess and it gives a gives easy you know um, identification so that can be tried a posterior approach she has advised to take that was also something interesting then uh, dr grija said it of pulse rate dr sarogya said it of pulse rate is more than systolic blood pressure shift to general anesthesia this is again a very good lesson learn and take carry home message then cannula as i said as old number of cannula g14 it leads to 300 flow 300 ml per minute that can be very good for massive hemorrhage and for uh, uh, transfusions keep all cannulas in your ot even i advise to keep a uh, catgut number 2 number 2 not 202 for billing as advised by dr billing many people they don't have number 2 everybody has one or they have uh, one zero but ne- and a straight needle straight also pragati yeah. straight, straight needle needs. and a number 2 yeah. catgut and pragati i want to add i want to add one more thing what yeah. dr saraugi has said i found it very pertinent like first yeah. catching the round ligament opening it up and yeah. then dissecting the bladder first and then yes. take do it then taking out the baby i think this that is, will be very good we can do a fast important. hysterectomy if the bladder is down we can put the clamps on the uterine artery and we can and the really the hemorrhage can come down yes, so i think exactly. that was a very good point and yeah, posterior hysterectomy point. posterior approach that is also one thing that's that we should start doing thing. yes we will ask madam to sometime demonstrate that case how she is having that posterior approach so and rule of 30 that was also important then isthmosil which is the new entity i learned today yes. and very interesting and very important and this these preventive measures as sir have told prevent isthmosil incision should uh, go down as low segment because cervix is an incision it can lead the cervical mucus to come and prevent your good healing then severe uh, thinning of low segment to close in two layers to prevent again uh, isthmosil and in retroverted uterus they are more prone for isthmosil so attach uterus uh, so do a proper closure and the closure then, point that was also important pragati like uh, yeah. the sutures they should be 1.5 cm apart yeah, both added. above down and medial i think our residents they always important. in a hurry and madam 1 to 1.2 cm 1 to sorry 1 to 1.2 cm less than 1.5 i wanted to say yeah. and huh. what us are residents always in a hurry and they take sutures i think almost 2 cm apart so i think this habit has to be made that the sutures have to be made 1 to 1.2 cm apart medial as well as 
uh, the above upper part and at the lower part. I think yeah, that was a very, very good. Message. This is very important. Very good yeah. message and simple yeah. things which we should, yes, uh, which our juniors should start we should, adapting. We should, we should practice daily. Now these things should yes. come in our yes. daily practice. No? Yes. Yeah. This is again that UV fold one inch above UV fold. You should open the uterus. That's another yes. point. Uterus is funnel shaped, so less chance if it extend if it goes down. And placental examination after C section. Don't leave any succinctured lobe inside. And massive transfusion should be followed properly. So these were the messages taken or lessons learned from today's webinar. And really, I am grateful to all the faculties and really all the delegates. And it's time for question and answer. Dr. Uh, Abharani and Dr. Kirija has really done my part when I was dropped down because of this net problem. So few questions have already been taken. Let's see. Uh, I think many of them have been taken, like uh, yes, how to prevent yes. anisthmosis. I think we have yeah. already taken that. Yeah. Yes, uh, yes. Uh, uh, then is it necessary to do subtotal hysterectomy? I don't think subtotal hysterectomy will work in a placenta previa accreta. It won't work. We have to do a total hysterectomy. Can diagnosing scar ectopic in dating scan in a patient with previous LSCS and managing it prevent placenta accreta? Dr. Pramila Malik, anybody can take it. Sarvan, can you can you ask again? Can diagnosing scar ectopic in dating scan in a patient with previous LSCS and managing it prevent placenta accreta? Definitely, definitely. See, not not all lower segmental uh, implantations will turn out to be accreta, but then the chances are pretty high. So if if you diagnose a scar ectopic, my my suggestion always to the patient is to go for termination. Of course, it's a different discussion altogether how you want to yeah, do yeah. it. There's yeah. so many yeah. things uh, go into that. Okay, there also you can have uh, torrential bleeding. There are so many yeah. ways how to prevent a bleeding. That's a different discussion. But yes, I always advise. A patient uh, to undergo MTP. And right. period of gestation at which we should do uh, uh, LSCS for placenta, percreta, accreta. I, I think it should be week. always in preterm, late preterm C section from 35 to 37 weeks. I've already and, as, 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 and cervical yeah. screening, that point was missed in summarizing. Cervical screening is very important, as Sarogi sir had said. If the cervical length is more than 30 mm, then we can do it up to 36, 37 weeks. But if it is 20 mm or something at 34 weeks, then we should do it. Because always a non-emergency cesarean is always good in these cases rather than doing an emergency cesarean at the mid of the night. So that was one of the Madam, questions. Madam, I wanted to add, this is basically yes, for postgraduates. If you come across a placenta previa, you try and find out whether it is anterior placenta previa or posterior placenta previa. If it's a posterior placenta previa, you are safe. Comparatively yes. safe yeah. as compared yes. to anterior placenta previa. So always in yes. a case of diagnosed placenta previa, try and discuss the case with the uh, sonologist and find out whether it is more anterior, more posterior. Hmm. Where it Hello. And a combination of previous C-section with an anterior placenta previa, I think it is a deadly one. So yes. And uh, how many weeks ultrasound should be done to exclude placenta accreta? I think we have already done this. After vaginal delivery in case of retained placenta, how to suspect a placenta accreta and then how to manage to leave the placenta if patient is not bleeding? This was another question. We can, we can we can do ultrasound if you are not if you can do ultrasound then and there itself. I I always have a ultrasound in my labor room and OT. I have a spare of, ultrasound. Okay, ma'am. Roll of roll of balloon insertion after uh, removal of placenta accreta. I think we have already done it. This is by Dr. Bharti. Can we do something extra? During LSCS uh, to prevent pass in future pregnancy, I think preventing an isthmosis, as Sir has rightly mentioned, and uh, Pragati has shown that we should not uh, uh, do too much of mopping Absolutely. and proper suturing. I think all this can uh, lead to less chances of placenta accreta. Any the role of giving? Yes, sir. Placenta accreta is eighteen to twenty-nine percent in subsequent pregnancy. 
yes sir that is why history taking is so important any patient who had a manual removal of placenta in a previous pregnancy or if she had a pph in a previous pregnancy we should always be alert so any role of giving mifepristone small dose like 10 mg per day in a small retained adherent placenta anybody any experience no sir no i 10 mg per day mifepristone in a small no, retained no. adherent placenta i uh, i have uh, i have not used it okay i too don't have any experience then there are how to confirm scar pregnancy on usg no, dr jay prakash will you take it yes ma'am if it, it is early pregnancy you should do a transvaginal ultrasound and this if somebody is well versed with transvaginal ultrasound i don't think they can miss a scar uh, uh, correct of it it is so typical of course there are two varieties one is predominantly inside the cavity one is predominantly outside the cavity both can be picked up uh, you should see that the fundus is absolutely beautifully visible on trans transvaginal ultrasound and then you have a scar there is hypoechoic there is a discontinuity of the anterior abdominal wall as anterior uterine wall and then there is a hypoechoic area it may be inside the cavity it may be outside the cavity but both classify as uh, scar ectopic there is uh, something no, like sliding organ sign sliding yes, sir yes, yeah yes, number yes, last yes. phone yes. now that basically yeah, difference is uh, aborting uh, intrauterine uh, pregnancy where you use uh, transvaginal mm -hmm. sonography and apply yes, little pressure I... and if you don't find any sliding of the gestational mm -hmm. sac probably it's a case of uh, scar ectopic yes yes sir uh, then there's one question importance of methotrexate in partial mole placenta accreta sir is all right partial mole ha uh, partial mole along with placenta accreta is, is there any role of methotrexate and beta hcg follow up definitely i think sir definitely yes, 100% 100% okay Uh, and then there is a question that uh, a role of nifedipine as tocolytic at 32 weeks in a case of placenta previa <clears throat> see in placenta previa the bleeding does not occur because of uterine contraction contraction it's basically because of separation of the placenta which remains unsupported so why should you use nifedipine <laughs> on the contrary if there is bleeding take up the patient immediately for section rather than waiting okay uh, with steroid but remember to give steroid that's most steroid important. Yes. yes yes i think uh, it has been traditional teaching that tocolytics are not given in antepartum hemorrhage i think we should follow that only uh, how to to close the uterus in to prevent isthmocele i think we have already done it already Now, answered ha uh, already answered so uh, on suspicion can we terminate patient legally at that time somebody has written i think 22 weeks uh, it was it must be on that 22 weeks case no yeah officially you cannot if the patient is bleeding i think then we can do no that is a different that is a different scene altogether i don't think that comes under mtp act yes if the MTP patient is bleeding act. and if she has maternal complications i don't think we should apply mtp act and then think in that those lines it's a different ball game altogether so uh, i think we have done with most of the questions and uh, i think there were quite good pearls of wisdom from our experts dr alka kriplani dr jay prakash and dr saraugi sir i think i also learned a lot and uh, it was really a pleasure sharing this session pragati over to you yeah thank you Pragati has dropped out again. Obliged me with you for this thing. It's I'm dropped out again. Oh no 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 no
so um i have always used to think those patient who the doctors who have really brought those near miss cases so you know i had published those bulletins so all na- near miss in nagpur they used to send them me send it to me as a small story and we have published and we have there 65 near miss cases in this bulletin and i was i was under after this uh, webinar since so many days and really i got to have so experienced and so learned faculties and they have given so practical and important tips thank you so much dr sarogi dr jayprakash a new friend thank definitely you. added to my list but all your experiences are so so valuable and there are so many population uh, patients as well as doctors who are really working in rural setup and in, in where, where facilities not available to talk about all those things in tertiary care center at at other places is fine but really to even to refer a patient with placenta accreta from a rural setup to a, a tertiary care is a great thing and those all who are taking part in cell shifting that patient rightly to us in right time is a big help i can say so really thank you to i'm thankful to all of you tog team they have been very in, in, um, active and instrumental in doing these uh, webinars and this is was our first webinar i i couldn't get a number of delegates who have logged in and our next webinar will be on 19th and next will be in on uh, in september so today's faculties really i will require your inputs to conduct other webinars also and i'm thankful to you all thank you so much thank you thank you very much yes thank you sarogi sir thank you very much it was wonderful experience sir you are muted sir you are muted Yes. Yes. Yeah, I must. I must thank Dr. Abharani, Chairperson, Dr. Giri Jawag, Dr. Pragati, Dr. Jay Prakash, Dr. Alka Kriplani, and uh, Rohan, and finally Nandita for giving me this opportunity. Thanks a lot. I enjoyed this webinar. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you thank very you, much. Thanks, Abharani. everybody. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Giri Jawag. Dr. Kirija, Dr. Alka has already left. Thank you. Yeah. So, Mr. Thank Session, you, you are there, Mr. Session. Subbu, Mr. Subbu, Subramaniam. They have also left. They also <laughs> left. <laughs> yes. Okay, ma'am. Thank you very much. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you so much, and Saraogi sir, it was a pleasure listening to you. I'm really all very happy. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay, I'll leave. Okay, so okay. okay, sir. Okay, you, so you, sir. bye, bye, sir. Bye, sir. Stay safe, sir. Bye. Oh, yes. Sure, thanks. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Pragati. Thanks. Yes, madam. Thank you. Saath saath me mile the. Uske baad aaj mile hai. Aaj mile. Ham log saath saath fir ho gaye. Very good. Very saath saath fir se ho gaye hain. And or hote rehenge. Sure, sure. Bye, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Pragati, ma'am, Abha, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, yes. Bye, bye. Thank you. Mm-hmm.